Hello there, and welcome to the first installment of Engines of Britain, in which we will be discussing the Pacer trains, and if they were really a failure. Let's begin, shall we? The Pacers are, or well, were the operational name of British Rail Class 140, 141, 142, 143, and 140 for diesel multiple units, or DMU. Despite having completely different registrations, they were all made for the same reason. In the begin 1980s, British Rail operated a large fleet of DMUs, the Class 101 being a prime example of this. The problem with these trains is that they were designed during the early 1960s, and they were starting to show their age. BR wanted to replace these aging sets with a long-term replacement. Unfortunately, this would not come cheap, so BR needed a train with low construction and running costs. Thus, the Pacers were born. In the concept stage, two ideas were proposed. One involved a so-called rail bus that would be cheap in basically everything, while the second involved a more substantial unit which would be more modern compared to the older DMUs in service. In the end, the former was chosen, though the latter idea would evolve into the massive Sprinter family. BR officials recognized that the rail bus would be better for serving small branches, so the train would not need high-capacity seat arrangement, which would mean less money. Anyway, work on the rail bus would begin in 1980 by the BR Research Department. During construction, many prototypes were made, like the early V1, which looks a lot more like a bus than an actual heavy rail train. The first official pacer was actually more so a test vehicle. The train was designated as a Class 140. It was mostly built for testing how the pacer family of trains would run, and it frequently ran services over the UK. Even though the train had a few issues during the initial tests, most were fixed, and BR saw these trains as a success, and BR would order another train of the Pacer family that would be more permanent. The second train in the family was the Class 141, designed by British Leyland in 1984 with service commenced later that year. These trains suffered from frequent issues with the transmission and other parts. BR tried to fix them though, but even after that, they were still quite troublesome. Surprisingly enough, most one-for-one ifs were sold to Iran out of all places, but they are now retired and scrapped over there. The next variant, which is the most produced pacer out of all of them, is the Class 142. This thing was going to replace the Class 141, as that thing was quite rough. The trains were based on the Leyland National Bus Build in Cumbria. It was originally used on the Devon and Cornwall branches in the northwest of England. Eventually, the Cornwall units were repositioned to work in the Liverpool area and the northwest, and they became a common sight on the north of England. Between 1990 and 1992, the trains were heavily rebuilt with more powerful engines, which increased the train's horsepower. Other additions were improved seating layouts and dot matrix route indicators. Anyway, BR and other companies that took the trains over after BR was privatized, like the trains, mostly because they were cheap to operate, so they were not really failures to them. Unfortunately, commuters and other people who used the railway did not like them. More on that later. The last trains in the Pacer family were the Class 143 and 144, which I will cover together because they are quite similar. The Class 143 came about during the development of the Class 142. It used a Walter Alexander bus body, instead of the more common Leyland National Bus model, used on all the other trains in the Pacer family. It is my favorite Pacer train simply, because it is in SCR, which is still bugged as heck. The trains entered service in 1985. The same year Super Mario Bros for the NES came out. Originally, they were used in the northeast before being sent to work in Wales and the southwest, and then they were transferred to Valley Lines and Wales and West during privatization. Then after that, they were transferred to numerous different companies. These include First Great Western and Transport for Wales. Then, the last Pacer came, which was introduced in 1987 and designated as a Class 144, the reason why it is a different train to the Class 143 is because it used a Cummins engine instead of the weaker Leyland built engine. But the average commuter would not see any major differences. The trains were either in two or three car sets, 
making the class 1 for 4 the only pacer that had three coaches. The trains were originally used in the northeast before being transferred to companies like Northern Rail and Northern Trains, and that were all the pacers. Unfortunately, in 2020, the aging pacers needed to be replaced, as they were the oldest trains in service on the National Rail Network, and it was planned that they were all going to be withdrawn and scrapped as they did not comply with rail vehicle accessibility regulations. Okay, I might need to explain that. The Rail Vehicle Accessibility Regulations, or RVL for short, is a statutory instrument in the UK which aims to make trains and other transport vehicles accessible for people with disabilities. And well, did the pacer follow that? No. Unfortunately, this quote-unquote law killed the pacers, and all were eventually replaced by the Class 195, which is just a diesel variant of the Class 331. Now that we know the history of these trains, let's talk about the thing which is probably the reason you clicked on the video, were they failures? Some people said they saved small branch lines due to their low operating costs, which is a valid point not gonna lie. While others said that the trains were very bouncy and rough, and passenger comfort on them was very bad, which is also true. So, what do I think? Well, every train can be a failure, if you hate it enough. 